Hi, this is Gary. Welcome to today's video. Today, I've got another fountain pen showdown for you. We're going to be taking a look at what is essentially the same pen, but in two different configurations. The first one is this. This is a Wingsun 698. What's different about this one? It's got a gold nib. The second pen we're going to be taking a look at is a Wingsun 698. And this one, it's got a steel nib. So join me now down on the mat. Let's take a look at these two pens. We'll compare them and we'll see what difference does a nib make. So here we are down on the mat. Let's fetch in the two pens. The first one, the Wingsung 698 with the steel nib. This is in this really nice transparent black colour. I really like the colouring on this one. The second one is a Wingsung 698 and this one's got a gold nib and it's in this really nice, I would call it a pale grey colour. When I ordered it on the picture it actually looked more blue so when it came I was expecting a bluish pen instead it was this nice grey and to be honest I do prefer the grey. I can use more inks in it, I'm not limited to blue inks. Let's take a quick look at them. What I'm going to do is get both of these out of the way We'll take a look at the steel nibbed one. The bodies and everything are identical, so we're not going to really spend too much time looking over the bodies of both of them, when one will do. So here we go. As I said, this is this gorgeous transparent colour. Take a look at the pen. The top of the pen is flat, and we can see some etched in rays, and they really catch that light nicely, don't they? It's the same on the gold one, except it's in a gold colour. At the bottom of that end finial there, we've got the clip. The clip is nice and springy. Same with the other one. The cap, it's the same width all the way down. So we've got this nice consistent width. We come down to this steel colored band. There we've got wings. If we turn it around, got some Chinese characters and then 698, which is the model number. The cap comes down and there's a definite drop off. So you can definitely feel that dropping down to the body. The body again, it's the same width all the way down. So it's nice to see. There may be a slight tapering, but if there is, it's very, very slight. And then we've got this silver colored band at the bottom, which leads us to the end cap. The end cap got a slight derm to it. You can see there where they must have been doing the injection for the plastic but it doesn't detract because you don't really see it. Now this is a piston filler. You might be able to tell by looking through the body. I like piston fillers because they're convenient. What I don't like about them and you can see here this is a really good example. The piston takes up about two-thirds of the body so you can't really get that much in the way of ink but I get enough that it lasts me about a month. If we come down to this end cap, now the end cap doesn't twist when I'm trying to turn it there. What you need to do is pull it out slightly and then it will twist. And obviously I'm not going to twist it now. So you need to release the mechanism so you can twist it. Now, when I got both of these pens, I did have some problems with them and it was Gary problems because I thought there was something wrong with this end cap. It was just, I hadn't pushed it down and there's a nice satisfying click there. So that's something to bear in mind. Don't be like Gary. Watch the instructions. So that's a quick walkthrough of the body. I'll just fetch in both pens again. As I say, that's the only real difference apart from colouring. You know, we've got grey and gold. We've got black and silver. Let's take off the caps. So we go half. One turn to take that cap off. That reveals the steel nib. Let's do the same with the gold pen. So again, it's one turn and that reveals the gold nib. Now let's take a closer look at these two nibs. So with the steel nib, it's very simple, isn't it? There's not a lot of decoration on there. So we've got the nib, we've got wings and super quality. Then under that, I think that's an F 
Thus, it's a fine nib. Now, one of the things I'm seeing in this close-up photo is it looks like the breather hole is slightly misaligned and also the left-hand time might be actually smaller than the other one. You don't notice it when you're writing there, but I've taken a close-up photo. That's why it's standing out to me. With the gold nib, well, this is a 14 karat gold nib. We've got some really nice scroll work on there, so it looks nicer. We've got Lucky. Now, I'm not sure if Lucky is a Wing Sun brand or Wing Sun name, or if there's just a Chinese company which creates these for a number of manufacturers. But we've got Lucky, we've got 14K, then we've got a little bit more scroll work. Nothing on here that I can see that indicates the size of the nib, but again, it's a fine nib. Really nice, really like the look of both of them. I don't know if you can see on the photo, I do have some ink staining on the gold nib. So that's something I need to try different inks in it to see if that happens. I've tried two different inks at the moment. The first one, I don't recall seeing any of this staining, but certainly with this ink, it's definitely there. And this is after I'd wiped the nib off as well. So from the nibs, we come down and we'll look at the section. So again, I'm just going to leave both the pens there. But the section we've got at the bottom, there's a small lip. And then the section itself, it tapers out until we get to the threads. It's nice and comfy to hold. So there I am. I generally hold my pens fairly low and it's really comfortable. Does it post? Nope, doesn't post at all. And that's the same with both of the pens. So it doesn't matter if it's a gold or the steel nib. Really nice looking pens. As I say, they're both the same model. Now you may be saying, but Gary, there is another big difference. And there is. We've got the transparent one. And we've got the solid colored one. The solid color one, it's got these ink windows. Don't need them in that transparent one, do we? So. One of the nice things here, the ink window, gives you an idea about how much ink you've got left. I would have liked them to be a little bit bigger because sometimes I find it hard to get a real view of what the ink level is, but we can't have everything. And for what I paid for these pens, well, I don't really care too much. So let me pop these pens away and then we'll do some weights and we'll do some measurements. Measurements. Now, again, they're both identical, so I'm only going to measure one of them and we'll measure the steel one. Let me get this lined up. So the length of the pen is 14.2 centimeters. If I uncap it and get that lined up, that's 13 centimeters. As I've already said, it doesn't post. The width of the body, that's, here we go, is 1.28 centimeters. I know it's hard to see that on the rule. The width of the section. So at the narrowest part, and this is where we do have a difference, it goes from 9.28 up to 1.08. Whereas on the gold one, and I can't really see the difference, it's 9.33 up to 1.07. Now, I have tried these multiple times, and every time I try it, I get this same difference. So that's definitely a measurable difference rather than just a one-off from how I was doing the measuring. Let's get these out of the way, and we'll do our weights. In comes the scale. There we go. Let's turn that on. So we're going to start with the steel pen. Now, both these pens are inked up, so we need to bear that in mind when looking at the weights. So the whole pen, 24 grams, and the cap, 12 grams. If we look at the gold pen, the whole pen is 26 grams. Cap by itself, that's 12 grams again. So to be honest, they're more or less the same weight. And I think I can explain the difference because of the levels of ink in both pen. So we've done our measurements. Time to do some size comparisons. Let's fetch this in. What I'm going to do again, I'm just going to fetch one of the pens in. This time we'll go for the gold one. Why not? So I'm going to pop that in the middle. So my first two size comparisons, these are standard ones I try to do with every video. We've got a Lamy Safari, and here we've got a Pilot Metropolitan. So as you can see, it's definitely slightly longer than both of these. Let's uncap them. So uncapped, the Safari and the Wingsun, about the same size. The Metropolitan, that's slightly a little bit shorter. Both the Metro and the Safari will post. Let's leave that cap off, get these out of the way. I'm going to fetch in the steel nib. Here we go. 
I'll leave that with the cap off. The next two pens are in the same price range as the steel pen. So the steel pen, it cost me 24 Australian dollars. The pens I'm going to fetch in to look at it. The first one is a Kaigaloo 316, which was also $24. Then the next one, this is a Moonman M600S. This one was $25. So same price. If we look, the Windsun does seem slightly longer. I mean, both the Kaigaloo and the Moonman, they have very much similar looks anyway. The nibs are where the big difference is. The Kaigaloo and the Moonman, they've both got number six nibs. Whereas the Windsun, I would say that's a number five nib. So in terms of looks, very similar sizes. Let's pop the caps on. See what the light wearing. We've got the full pen there. There's a the Kaigaloo going on. And then finally, the Wingsong. So let's get the tops all lined up. There we go. So when we've got the cap on, we're going really from the Kaigaloo being the shortest, but only just. The Wingsong and the M600S, I would say they're tying for length. Let's get those out of the way. Let's look at some more pens. So I'm going to fetch that gold one back in. This time, we're going to go for pens the same price as this gold nib. So the gold nib, that cost me 71 Australian dollars. First pen I'm going to fetch in is the Twisby Diamond 580, which was 72 Australian dollars. And then the Narwhal School Kill, that one was 69 Australian dollars. So they're both really either side in terms of pricing. When I look here at the sizes, let me just get those top ones lined up. The Twisby and the Wing Sun, to me, they're about the same size. The Narwhal is definitely edging out in terms of size. And all three of these, they're all piston fillers. Let's take the caps off. There we go. Let's get the bottoms of the nibs lined up. So once we're taking the cap off, I would say the Wing Sun slightly beats out the Narwhal, but the 580 again, roughly the same size. In terms of nibs, the Narwhal looks longer because it's got that number six nib, whereas both the Twisby and the Wing Sun roughly look very similar, number five size-ish. One more set of comparisons. I know we've got lots of comparisons today. Let me get both of these out of the way. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fetch in two gold nibs. So the first one here is a Platinum 3776 Century. And then the second one I've got is the Pilot Custom Heritage 92. So to remind you of price, it was $71 for the Wing Sun. For the 3776, $200. That's nearly three times the cost. For the Pilot Custom Heritage 92, $250. So that's nearly three and a half times as much for the gold nibs. Now, when we look at these, the Wing Sun is definitely the longer pen. Piston filler, remember? The Pilot Custom Heritage 92, that's also a piston filler. The Platinum 3776, that isn't, that's just a cartridge converter. Taking a quick look at the nibs, I mean, I've got to be honest, the nibs on the 3776 and the Pilot, they do look so much nicer. Yes, I know there's a little bit of decoration on that Wingson one, but the other two pens just knock it out of the park. So that's the biggest difference I can see in terms of the nib looks. Let me just pop the caps back all on these. So we'll do one final comparison with them all capped up. There we go. I know they're all very close, but I want to try and get it so we can see them nice and easily. Just get them lined up at the top. So when we've put the cap on, the wing sun slightly longer, but not by that much. I'm now going to clear these off and then I'll fetch in the paper so we can do our writing samples. So I'm fetching in my black and red notepad. This uses the optic paper, which is a really nice and fountain pen friendly paper. Just fetch that in. And the first pen we'll take a look at is the steel nib. The ink that I've chosen for this is by Diamine, and it's Diamine Sherwood Green. I do love my green inks. This, it's a really nice, and it is evocative of a forest to me. I have actually been to Sherwood Forest, and yeah, I can see where they're trying to go from with that green. And that's when we see the old Robin Hood films. This is the sort of green that you see them wearing. So I think that's really nice. Get this out of the way. 
and let's do a writing sample. So we have a wing sung, 698, and this is a steel fine nib. The ink, as I say, dye mine, Sherwood Green. Nice ink, flows really well. Just fetch the pen in so we can see them together. Beauty of these black pens, you can use virtually any ink with them, can't you? Let's look at our drying times. So we go immediate, 10 seconds, 30 seconds, smudging ever so slightly. So I'll go for one minute just for completeness. After a minute, yeah, that's nice and dry, but we expected that given the 30 seconds. I'm going to move the mic down to the paper so you can hear the pen write. That's a really pleasant writing experience. A smudge amount of feedback. It reminds me of writing with a pencil. That's how it feels. It's quite stiff. So if you like a stiff nib, if you like that pencil feel, I think this is a really good option for you. It's a nice pen to write with though. Final test, we're gonna see if there's any line variation. So this is with no pressure. And this is with a little bit of pressure added in. And as we can see, you know, it's a stiff nib very, very little in the way of line variation. I'll just do a little scribble there. You know, that feed keeps up quite nicely, even though I'm scribbling really fast. So now let's take a look what's in the gold nibbed pen. Well, the ink I've got in there is by Diamine. Let me just move that paper at the same time. And it's Diamine Writer's Blood. I love the color of this ink. When I got this, I was a little bit surprised because to be honest, it was darker than I was expecting. But yesterday I had to go and have a blood test. But on the bit of cotton where they stick the needle in, when I took the cotton off my arm and looked at it, the actual color of the blood was virtually identical to this. So it just shows how your expectations can be quite different than reality. So let's get this out of the way. Fetch in that pen. So we've got now, strangely enough, a wing sun. 698 and this is a gold fine the ink diamine writer's blood i love that we're getting some shading coming through here not on that e on the s on the six the nine the eight the g we've got quite a bit of shading coming through in this ink which I don't see in the Sherwood Green. Drying times, so this is immediate. 10 seconds. I've just realized, you know, I didn't smudge when I did the immediate on the Sherwood Green. 30 seconds. So we're still smudging there. Finally, one minute. After one minute, yeah, look at that, nice and dry, isn't it? I'll move the microphone so you can hear it right. That's really nice. There's definitely a lot more spring in there. It's definitely a softer nib, but you can feel, I know it's going to sound weird, but I can feel like a pencil underneath it. So it's still got a little bit of that firmness, but it's got that spring, it's got that softness, it's got that bounce with it as well. Let's look at line variations. So gentle, with pressure. Look at that, there's a definite change. If I do some, there we go, some S's. You can see definitely there where we're getting this extra width on my downstrokes. 
and just as I did with the other one, let's there we are, just scribbled there. So we see again, we've got that nice flow. The pen's keeping up, even though I'm scribbling really, really fast. So all in all, another nice experience. They're slightly different between the two of them, which we'll look at in a minute. But in terms of writing, yeah, I like this. I say with the writer's blood, I love that I'm seeing this shading coming through in my writing. Whereas I don't see that in that diamine Sherwood Green. Let me get these out of the way and then we'll go through and we'll give these pens some scores. So here we have both the pens. We can see them both side by side. First score I'm going to give them is going to be on pen looks. I love the looks of both of these. We'll start with a steel nibbed one. I love the transparency. I love the black colour in this. So I can see through, I can actually see the mechanism. I would have liked if it was more transparent so I could see the ink colour, but I'm not overly fussed about that. I can see my ink levels no matter what. I like where we've got the silver trim that really offsets that gorgeous darkness of that transparent material. In terms of pen looks, I'm going to give this one a 9 out of 10. With the gold nibbed version, the grey is nice, but it's not as interesting as the transparency colour. We've got the ink window, which we looked at. Again, it's nice. I can see the fact that there's ink in there, just not as easy to see it. To me, the greyness of this, it looks boring compared to the other one. So for pen looks, I can only give this one an 8 out of 10. I think if I was to buy another, I would get another transparent one. Maybe if they've got a different transparent colour. I just like the transparent pens. I like the demonstrator pens. Writing experience. Well, you can see we've just done our writing sample. Just going to fetch in a couple of others for you to look at. The first one is on Rhodia paper. What I've done is try to do a page of each. I like this. Again, I'm seeing the shading coming through with the writer's blood. Whereas the Sherwood Green, that's more of a consistent colour. The line, yes, it's definitely fine on both of them. You can see that. Again, in the gold version, we're getting that line variation in the writing, which again, it adds character. It brings the writing to life. But it's still quite nice. Let's take a look on 52 GSM Tomoe River. So here we go. So again, I've done a page with both of them. I've got to be honest, on this, the writer's blood doesn't seem to have as much shading in it. It seems to be more of a consistent consistent colour. I mean, yes, there's bits of shading coming through, but again, we see the line variation. Really nice. The Sherwood Green, again, it's very nice. It's very stiff, but it doesn't catch on the paper. It flows over. Now, I know I've only shown a couple of different papers here. I've used these pens on all sorts of different papers from, you know, $2 ones from the supermarket all the way up to this Rodia and the Tommy River. Enjoyed writing on all of them. Had no issues, had no flow issues. Both the pens are really, really nice both write really well. In terms of writing experience though, because we're getting that character coming through by using that gold nib, I think that really does take it just a little bit better than the steel nib. So writing experience for the 698 with the steel nib, I'm going to give that 8 out of 10. For the gold nib, I'm going to give that 9 out of 10. Ink flow, we saw in the test, the ink flows really well in them both. I've had no issues with hard starts, had no issues with skipping, the pens write, and I have left them up to three weeks between writing sessions. I picked them both up and they both write straight away. Really nice pens, really pleased. They both perform so well. In that respect, I'm going to give them both a 9 out of 10. The interesting one, value for money. This is the one that I always really struggle with because what's value for money for me may not be for somebody else. So I've just got to bear that in mind. With the steel version, we'll look at that first. $24. Not the cheapest you can get. You can get cheaper piston fillers, but it's a very nice, consistent, pleasurable experience. I've had no issues with it. And at $24 Australian dollars, I do consider it good value for money. So in terms of that, I'm going to give it 9 out of 10. The gold version, 71 Australian dollars. So that's nearly three times the price of the steel one. But you've got that gold nib. When you look at other gold nibbed pens, you're talking minimum of $200. You know, so it's less than half the price of some of the competitors. It writes really nice. I really enjoy using it. If I had to pick between the two pens, I, I've got to be honest, I would pay the extra for the gold nib. Value for money terms, well, I think you can't beat it. And to be honest, it's a 10 out of 10 for me. It really is exceptional value for what you're paying 
and what you're getting. So that means our total scores for the Wingsun 698 with the steel nib is 8.75 out of 10. The Wingsun 698 with the gold nib, that's 9 out of 10. So slightly beating that steel version. I love both these pens, don't get me wrong. And they're pens I can see that I'll be regularly using. In fact, I'm toying with, with emptying one of them out, even though I haven't finished the ink, because I've got a couple of other inks I want to try in them. They're really nice. They're a pleasure to write with. I do find the nib on the steel one, it's a little bit stiff. I... I like my nibs were a little bit softer, but that doesn't really matter because it does what it's meant to do. It lets me get ideas out of my head and onto paper, and I enjoy the process of doing it. I may look at seeing if I can get some nibs that I can replace in the steel one. I think they're a number five size, so I may see if I can get some number five replacement nibs. Maybe see if I can get a broad and see how that goes. That'd be really interesting. But based upon what I bought, which is what these currently are, yeah, I think they're both really good value for money. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. What do you think about the differences between that gold nib and the steel nib? Which one is your preference? Do you prefer the steel or do you prefer the gold? Please drop a comment down below. Let's kickstart the conversation. Hit the thumbs up button, give the video a like. Every time you like, every time you comment, well, it just helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.